Hey, hey, hey. My name is JT, and welcome to the People's Paradise Podcast. Welcome to the People's Paradise Podcast. I'm your boy. It's great to be talking with you. It's great to have you here. Listening to me. Tune in there for a moment. Um, got a lot to talk about. Uh, first off, I want to say thank you so much to those of you who've been, if that's you, who's been tweeting me, who's been sending me messages, responses on my Instagram, tell me your opinions on my rhetoric. Thank you so much for tweeting this podcast. Thank you so much for telling your friends and your family about what's been going on with me, your boy. And I just want to thank you, man, for playing a part in this podcast. It is the paradise. You know, in the presence of the people, we all are equal. Yeah, that sounded so fake epic like that. That didn't sound authentic at all. Like that sound that literally sounded like I, I was trying too hard with that when I apologize. But in, in all seriousness, though, um, before I get into the show segments, I just want to say that the reason that I created this podcast wasn't just because I like to hear myself speak, but also because I love to talk with you. I love to talk with you. I love to connect with you. I love the idea that somewhere you're sitting in a Starbucks or on your school campus in the MU or in the library, just sitting, sitting down, listening to me talking and feeling some type of connection with me. So that's why I'm doing this. I want to thank you so much for just playing a part of my dream. Thank you so much for taking the time. I, I really, I really am humble. Really am humbled as a podcaster, as a personality. To be chasing my dream and knowing that there's somebody out there supporting me. So, um, with that being said, we um, have quite a lot to talk about right now. Um, so, as you know, if you live in the United States of America, or if you don't live in the United States of America, the presidential debate was last night, and... You know, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton kind of got into it. I didn't watch the whole debate. I didn't have the time to watch the whole debate because I was too busy, um, you know, trying to get my life together to watch two other people F up the life of the country. But um, I went through a few videos, watched a few clip notes like I know you did. Like I know you probably did. You probably went on YouTube, watched a few videos, looked at a few tweets. Read a few uh, Instagram memes and kind of got a good idea of what happened, which I kind of that's one thing I love about the age we live in right now is when you have something happen on the news, you can always kind of just go to Twitter and figure out what happened from there. You can go to Twitter and Instagram and figure out you don't have to actually go to CNN. You don't have to go to MSNBC. You can literally just find out by going on your timeline on your Facebook, or going on your Instagram. And I like to thank the creative people of Instagram, <laughs> the creative meme artist of Instagram and Twitter for providing us with such recreational pleasure. So with that being said, um, we got a lot to talk about. Um, um, when you're getting into t- first off, I got to tell you right now, right now, as I'm talking to you right now, I'm actually setting up the ad campaign for this podcast because I'm trying to, I'm trying to expand the audience, you know, and I know, I know you like it how it is where it's like a private conversation between you and me, but I do want to bring some other people into the podcast. I do want to f- try to expand. I do want to grow great with this. And as I grow greater with this podcast, the relationship is always going to be between you and me. We're always going to be cool, we're always going to be tough, we're always going to be having a good relationship. But, you know, I got to get out there. And so I said that to say this, I might F up a little bit while I'm talking right now because I'm doing, literally doing two things at once. I'm, I'm talking to you and, oh, no, no, dang it, show the comma. Okay, so anyway, let's just, the show segment because I'm going to get into today, we're going to get into the disdain or entertainment section. And in the dis- in the disdain to entertain section, of course, we're going to talk about the situation with um with the debates. My opinions about it. We're gonna have a discussion about that. I also want you to tell me your opinions about it. Um, we're also going to get into. We're also going to talk about. We're also going to talk about a very very funny picture that surfaced the web. Well, it didn't. T- let me just not say it like somebody snuck a photo of it. What happened was Bernie Sanders tweeted Bernie Sanders' team. They made a wrong decision on this. They actually tweeted like this heck of sad looking picture of him. Let's see if I can look it up. Let's see. And it's the picture of him staring at the at watching the presidential debate on his TV. And it just looks so sad. And 
that's why I actually named this episode We Are Sorry, Bernie, because he just looks so depressed. Like, matter of fact, uh, once I get done setting up this ad, I'm going to go and I'm going to get into the show segments. I'm actually going to take the time to go to it and um, show you, show you, not show you, I can't show you, but I can actually read to you some of the tweets that somebody, that some people had in response to it. Which, you know, but we're going to get into that. In the We Need Jesus section, in the We Need Jesus section, I want to talk about, there's this big thing that's going around here called, uh, called slut shaming, you know, sl- shaming people for having sex. And in the We Need Jesus section, you know, generally I always talk about like crazy accidents, world events, war, oil spills, sea otter isles, uh, the sea lion population dying, elephants dying out, Kim Kardashian get more implants. I generally talk about stuff where I feel like we need Jesus. But I decided this episode from the We Need Jesus section, we're going to talk about my opinions on slut shaming, my opinions on my opinions on what slut shaming is and my opinions on how we should deal with that. So let me just finish this last little ad and. Sorry, I'm trying to do so much right now. You know what? Wish I had a good, wish I had some good entertainment for you guys, but I'm just setting up this ad right now. And we're we'll stopping to the show segments right now. I gotta set up this ad. And I apologize. The reason why, the reason why I'm having such a hard, the reason why uh, I'm waiting till now to set up the ad is because I'm doing this podcast live. So it's kind of hard for me to, um, I couldn't. I couldn't get the live link for the podcast until I s- turned it on and I'm setting it up on my phone while recording this on the podcast. So like, it's like, you know, it was like, ah, uh, just, um, it just is like, ah, uh, it's just, it's just, I don't know. Just, it's just a headache. So, but this is what I got to do. I got to put myself out there. I got to keep grinding. You know, that's one thing that kind of keeps me going with this podcast is the fact that, you know, even though I have to put in all this hard work, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting up and walking two miles down the street to the library to record in the studio. I'm running all the time. I'm always doing something, you know, it's just, I, uh, it's just, it's, it can get kind of, it can get kind of irritating sometimes. But then other times I'm like, you know what? No, I can do it. I can do it. I, I got the strength for it. You know, I feel like, I feel like at the end of the day, God put me in this position and gave me the the dreams I have because He knows that I'm strong enough to try to. He knows that I'm strong enough to pursue my destiny. He knows I'm strong enough to pursue my goals. So once again, I apologize. I know I'm just give me like one minute. Let me give me one minute. Let me finish doing this segment. Let me finish writing this down. Writing this down. Uh, okay, one more, one more, and we, I think we're good, I think we're good, Let's see, open this field up about Okay. And okay and go to my budget. Go to my budget. I'm almost there. I'm almost there, I promise. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Just give me like one more minute. I'm almost there. Let's see. There we go. Okay, there we go. And and we have an ad running. Okay, we're back. Okay, cool. Mm. All right, we're back again. Um. So now we're back again. Now we're having the podcast. Now it's all up and rolling. Got my ad up. 
got the ad up, got it in review. Now we have the podcast live, so that's right. The reason why I was setting up that ad was because I was trying to get the live part of the podcast up and running. So that way, when I have the podcast up, I can have you comment. I can have you chat in the comment boards. Um, if you listen to this podcast on Spreaker, which is one website, if you listen to it on SoundCloud, you might be listening to it on iTunes, you might be listening to it on YouTube. But if you listen to it on my Spreaker, what happens is you're able to comment, you're able to talk to me in the chat room live right now as I'm speaking right now. Yes, live. So it'd be a cool little situation to hop into. You know, we get to have a conversation. And that's the one part I like about doing this podcast. Like I said, is I love being able to do live live communication with the people that are really, they're really excuse me for lack of better words, really mess with me, who really like me, who really tune into my rhetoric, who really are having a who really are having a good time with what I'm saying. So I appreciate that. Now, um we're going to get into the show topics and let's say first thing we're gonna talk about is presidential tweet. Um the presidential debate. First things first, um few things came up from the presidential debate that I want to talk about. Um first thing, Donald Trump, you know if you watch a few videos from the presidential debate, or if you were more um, less det- less attention deficit than I am, if you were actually watching the debate at the moment, you'll see that Donald Trump he can be a little bit, you know, overbearing, a little bit stubborn, a little bit bullish, and very misogynistic. And a lot of people were actually mad at the moderator of the debate. And if you don't know what a moderator is, that's the person who actually is like, okay, so Donald Trump is going to speak. Now Hillary Clinton's going to speak. Donald Trump is going to speak. Now Hillary Clinton's going to speak. That guy. And so what happened was, is, um, you know, Hillary Clinton, when he, when the guy would ask Hillary Clinton questions and she would speak, people got mad because Donald Trump would always interrupt her. In fact, the number they said was Donald Trump interrupted Hillary Clinton 28 times. And people were mad at the moderator because they said he didn't do a good job of moderating it. Now, in my opinion, this is what I think. And first off, this first part of the debate, this is what I, this is what my opinion is. And I want you to tell me what do you think. I think that what happened was is the moderator probably was thinking, "Man, this is some good content. I know this is going to go viral. I know this is going to be great." Because keep in mind, even though it's his job to moderate the panel and make sure that both candidates debate with each other in a professional and civilized manner, in some way he's probably thinking like, "Man." If this goes well, this is going to get viral views. It's going to go viral. This is going to be professional. So I think that's probably why he wasn't moderating as much as he should have. Because, you know, it just makes him look... Granted, even though it makes him look better, it doesn't make him look more better. It makes... You know, it increases views, increases publicity. So, you know, got to get that good content. I promise you, somebody behind closed doors, before the moderator walked out, I promise you, somebody told him, Hey, you know what? If Donald Trump starts ranting, just let him rant. Let him rant. He sells headlines, man. He's a headline seller. Just sell it. We need these headlines. We need these retweets. We need these retweets. We need these retweets. But, um, you know, they had a lot of good rhetoric. You know, um, they were asked a few questions and a lot of people felt different ways about it. One one question that both were asked was about the stop and frisk, the stop and frisk policy that they have in, in, um, in New York because they're thinking about bringing it to Chicago and the stop and frisk policy is when police have the right basically to just stop and frisk anybody who looks who looks suspicious and Donald Trump said that he agreed that he agreed with it and he said that you know in places like Chicago the stop and frisk thing would actually be of a great help and I was before um, before I started this podcast I actually was listening to the breakfast club and they were talking about the stop and frisk policy, and the lead um, per, lead host of the Breakfast Club, DJ Envy, he was saying how the stop and frisk policy in New York it worked, and in one in the last year that it was effective, it actually took eight hundred and ninety plus guns off of the street. But the stop and frisk policy was stopped because they felt that it was very biased and it was targeting African Americans and, and Hispanics. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this is, is this is because. You might be African American, you might be Mexican American, you might be Caucasian, and you might be living in the United States of America. So, at some point, the stop and frisk, at some point, the stop and frisk is going to affect you in some way, shape, or form. And 
My opinion on the stop and first thing, and I want to have your opinion too. I want you to tweet me, message me, and let me know what do you think about it. My opinion on the stop and first thing is, if it works, I mean, granted, in New York, they said that even though the crime rate dropped during the years that the stop and frisk um, policy was in effect, they said that crime around that time stopped all over the all across the country. So it wasn't like the stop and frisk thing was actually something that was stopping crime. In fact, it was really just racial profiling and it wasn't an excuse for the cops to racially profile African-Americans. Now, here's my opinion about that. Me personally. I don't think that statistic is right. I don't think that statistic is right. I think that I think that the stop and first policy at some in some way, shape, or form works. Granted, if you have it in the United States of America, you're gonna have some times where people feel racially profiled because if you're doing it in an urban environment, if you're doing it in African American, most of the places where you where you're gonna have to do stop and frisk at are gonna be in high crime rate areas. And most high crime rate areas in the United States of America are either predominantly black or predominantly Mexican. Now, granted, you can go to some ghettos in California and maybe some in Washington and find neighborhoods where it's predominantly Samoans and Asians and them niggas is shooting shit up. But generally, when you go to most places, it's African-American and Mexican. So racial profiling is going to play a part in some shape or form. You know, just it is what it is. Personally, my opinion if the stop and frisk thing is working effectively, then I want it to be in effect. Because I'd rather you, I'd rather a whole community feel racially profiled and more safe rather than unsafe. That's just my thing. You can have a difference of opinion about it. You know, hey, that's just you. But that's just my opinion. Now, another thing that they had talked Donald Trump about was, you know, the com- well, Hillary Clinton attacked him about the comments that he made about um, Miss, what was her name? Um, Miss America, let me go to get her name. I forgot her freaking name. Miss Universe. Miss Universe. Donald Trump just got Alicia Machado. Mm. Yeah, Miss Universe. She became a United States citizen, and Donald Trump called the woman Miss Piggy and said she gained a massive amount of weight and it was a real problem. And. Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton attacked him, you know, of course, calling him misogynistic and called him this and called him a pig and this and that. But, I mean, they called it fat shaming. Um, I gotta be honest with you. This is, wow, she was beautiful. Wow. Oh my God! Mm, wow, he was. I'm sorry, I was just looking at a picture. Um, there's a. I'm watching it on. Let me see. You can look. You can watch it a bit right now. I'm playing it right now while we're listening. Hmm. Okay, that's effed up. But well, man, she was beautiful when she was younger. I ain't gonna lie to you. Hmm. Okay, so anyway, Hillary Clinton attacked me about that. Now, in this episode, I want to ask you, how do you feel about fat shaming? How do you feel about fat shaming? What do you think about fat shaming? In my opinion, I think fat shaming... I don't even like the term fat shaming, man. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I don't even like that term, fat shaming. Like, what is fat shaming? You telling somebody they're fat? Because I'm going to tell you right now, if I get overweight to a point where my health is in danger, I want somebody to fat shame me. Please fat shame me. Please fat shame me and tell me what do you think. Please fat shame me because please fat shame me. I'm just saying. Now, in that scenario, I think it's wrong to attack a lady and, of course, call her Miss Housekeeper and Miss Piggy and stuff like that. Like, that's just, that is kind of wrong. But I think, I think, honestly, I don't even think... I don't even think Donald Trump is half as misogynistic as he pretends to be. I really, I really, I really look at, I really think Donald Trump is just somebody who just does stuff just, just for headlines. Like I've always, I've always thought that, like I've always felt like, I've always felt like he literally was just doing stuff for headlines just to get people's attention, just to get people like, oh my God, did you hear what Donald Trump says? Like, I don't even, I don't even take him seriously that much anymore. I really don't. 
Like I don't. I just I I just don't at all. And that's why that's what to be honest with you on a on a very very real level that's what kind of made it hard for me to take the presidential debate so serious was because you know the problem with Hillary Clinton is is when the presidential debate in my opinion was she's trying so hard to tell people that like uh, we all know across the board that Donald Trump is a piece of shit. Excuse my language. We all know. We all know that Donald Trump is a terrible person. We all know that Donald Trump is a terrible, horrible candidate to be president. We all know that. In fact, you know that more. We know that better than I do. But at the same time, since we all know that, I don't feel like that's something that we should have to debate in the news anymore. You're trying to debate this man's. You're trying to attack this man's morality. We all know he's a piece of shit. We all know that it's evident. What you're supposed to do is. Just stick to your guns and try to convince people about why they should believe in you. Stop telling people why they shouldn't believe in Donald Trump. It's already evident. Common sense is evident. The people who do believe in Donald Trump, that's a set following. To to be somebody who likes and supports Donald Trump, you have to have a set following. It means you have a set following of people. They ain't going no damn well. That set following of people that Donald Trump has, they ain't going nowhere. They they sincerely believe in Donald Trump. I've talked to Donald Trump supporters, and I'm gonna tell you right now, they they are a different class of American. These niggas, these they are a different class of American. It's not something that it's not it's not something that you can kind of be like you can kind of convince out of it. Like when they believe in when they believe in Donald Trump, they believe in Donald Trump. It's it's totally different thing. So I don't know. That's my opinion. I think I think in the presidential debate, and I think in this whole campaign in general, I think she's 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 paid too much attention to trying to she's paid too much attention to trying to say he's a terrible president. That's my thing. I've been saying that the longest time. She's been taking she's been paying too much attention to that to say he's a terrible president and that he shouldn't be president and stuff like that. Like we all know that. We all know that it's not this is no secret. This is no secret. We we are all certain that he's a terrible president. Tell me why we should like you. And then a lot of people were attacking her. You might be one of the people too who says that you know, she's too um she's not personable enough. She's she's not, she's not a like People say she's too politic, too politician. She's not a real person. She's not personable enough. She's not this. She's not that. I'm like, dude, like you. I've said this on this podcast before, and I'm guessing I'm going to have to say it again. The thing about Hillary Clinton is, is with Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton was trained to be a politician. Her whole life, she's had to be a politician. Now, the disadvantage that she had when being a politician is she's a woman. So what happens is, there's a certain preconce- preconceitment or preconceived notion against women that women aren't smart enough to be politicians. Women aren't witty enough. Women can't be taken seriously as leaders. So, because of that, she's always had to. She's literally always had to have some display this some sort of masculinity to show that she was tough enough, tough enough to be uh, tough enough to be a politician, and. Like when you compare her to a Donald Trump and you say, wow, Donald Trump's so entertaining. Because that, that's half of what people like him because he's an entertaining person. Hillary Clinton has always been in a position where she couldn't afford to be. She couldn't afford to be witty and stuff like that because if she was, she'd be discriminated against. I don't think Hillary Clinton would have gotten as far as to being president if she would have had being silly and goofy like people wanted to be to an extent. And. Am I saying I like her all the way? No. In fact, I really don't feel comfortable vote with voting for her. But at the same time, I also understand that when you're a woman operating in a career that's male dominated is hard. Like it's hard because people are going to have a, um, a preconceived notion that, you know, that you can't you, you're not tough enough. So I'm I'm all for her in that scenario. Now. What I did want to touch on. I I and I this is something that was oh, let me send this last tweet. That's the hard part about doing this podcast, man. When you do marketing Yeah, when you do marketing, man, it it can be hard because it's like you always you always literally 
on a marketing game, you're always literally running, always literally, always literally just always running the whole time. So now with Bernie Sanders, and I want to talk about that, um, Bernie Sanders had a very, very funny, um, it, it shouldn't be funny. This really ain't shouldn't be funny. It's this funny picture of Bernie Sanders staring at the TV and the 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 TV staring at the TV. He looks so sad, and I'm just reading some of the um, I'm just reading some of the tweets that people said, and they're heck of funny. Shout out, here's a few of them. Shout out to Clearly what she said. That picture of Bernie is so sad. He should be there. Oh my God, he reminds me of Santa Claus mixed with a KFC guy. Shout out to Samantha says. Bernie looks like the sad old man wistfully watching the city burn in a dystopian film. Shout out to Di- Samantha Say Samantha says I'm actually going to retweet that. That was pretty clever. I like that. Uh, let's see another one. <laughs> okay, so shout out to the Zach T H E Z A C H the Zach. He did this thing where he screamed. He like photo photo. Sh- Photoshop the TV screen that that um, he photoshopped the TV screen that that uh, that Bernie Sanders is staring at with a picture of this old the old police detective from Law and Order. That is so crazy. Shout out to Amy Skoma. I want to be in Bernie's house and have him tell me the stories behind every one of those trinkets on the shelves. Oh, because he has all these pots and pans on the shelf. So, I guess it's understandable. Um, <laughs> okay, shout out to Rogers Base. R-O-G-E-R-S-B-A-S-E. Rogers Base. He photoshopped a picture of Dragon Ball Z with Goku versus Vegeta. And Bernie Sanders is watching it. I think the thing that, that hurts me the most... The thing that hurts me the most about that scenario is... Is I feel like... It's crazy that we've arrived in the United States of America, you and me, if you're an American too, we've arrived at a point in the country where the two people that we have running for office in our country are people who on the polls and who on the polls are panly disliked by everybody, who everybody just automatically just is like, bro, I don't like those people. I don't really mess with those people. Though. They're stupid. Like. People say Hillary Clinton is not real. People say Donald Trump is stupid. And it's weird to say that the reason why I named this podcast episode We Are Sorry Bernie was because I was disgusted that the only person who was sincere, who really cared about this country, who really cared about people, who you can look at and say is a genuine person from the heart to the soul to the head, we didn't vote for him. That's the thing that hurt me the most. I was like, we should have at least taken the time to vote for the man. We should have taken the time to consider him. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. That's my opinion. I personally think that I think Hillary Clinton is. I think Hillary Clinton is a sincere, nice person. I just don't think. I just don't think she's sincere. She's a politician. But the catch is, is that's the job of a politician. Bernie Sanders was the closest to we would get to having a true humane, like universally caring about people person in the White House. But people didn't want that. People thought he was too old. They wanted a woman president. When plus Hillary Hillary Clinton had the super delegates and everything. So you know it is what it is. I like I said, I'm gonna be honest with you, I halfway want people to I halfway want people to vote for Donald Trump because I feel like I want America to see what they've been supporting. I want America to see what they've been supporting. I want the Republican Party to see what they've created. If Donald Trump is elected, I fear for this country, but at the same time, I want them to see what they voted for, what they created. And that's just my opinion on it. Now, what else I wanted to talk about? Let's see what else I got into the news topics today. See what's going on. Hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I actually had a challenge I want to tell you about, by the way. This is my little podcast challenge. I decided to do it just to see 
how you will react to it, just to see how you felt about it. Podcast challenge. If you're a guy and you have a crush on a girl, I want you to do this challenge. I challenge you to DM that girl, birds of a feather flock together. I'm not as cute as you, but hey, who is? Heart. I've a, that's my challenge to guys. I want you guys to DM that to a girl. If she does not fall in love with you by then, then trust me. If she doesn't fall in love with you by then, then trust me. Trust me. It's trust me then. I need better writing skills because I, I'm terrible at writing. But yeah, I just thought about that. I'm always trying to come up with new segments in this podcast because I, I feel like I'm always missing something. You know what I mean? I am always feel like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to call it. That's what I messed up. Oh, I messed it. Yeah, I did this. This was a this was a, a negative one. Okay, you go. We're gonna get okay back again. So we are going to get into the. We need these. Okay, you know I gotta get my brain together. I I messed up everything. I had the pot. What happened was I had the podcast layout and I messed it up. I just wasn't organized. But now we're back again. So in the we need Jesus segment of the podcast, we are going to talk about. Um, I just said I was going to talk about the whole thing about slut shaming, and I thought about it, but I feel like I don't know. I feel like that's not. I feel like that's not what I. I want to talk about that, but it's kind of like. Eh. So I decided we're going to talk about the situation with the gunman who's been shoot. The, well, these these shopping mall shootouts that have been happening all across the country. The one that happened in Texas. The one that happened in New York. Um, recently, they had one in Texas where a gunman injured nine people before he was shot down. Thank God to the cops for getting him. And, you know, this has been a recurring thing for the last two weeks. It happened in New York. It happened in Texas. It happened in Minnesota. It shocked the hell out of me when I heard it happened in Minnesota because I can't think of any good reason why you would have people shooting, doing mass shootings in Minnesota. Like, that's the most random place you can have a shooting in the world. Like, that's the most random place to even think about shooting people. So, I don't know if they can, if they willing to shoot people in Minnesota. I know they are willing to come here and shoot my black ass. So, with that being said, I want you all to be careful, be cautious, and really take time to really take time to take really take time to be cautious out there where you are. Whether you're living in Arkansas, whether you're living in Oklahoma, if you see any suspicious activity, let people let people know let people know that you know what's going on. Let people know what's going on. You need to say something because we're at a point now in this country where anything is happening. Anything is going on. So right now, what you need to do is be cautious. You know, if you see any out caught and so if you see anything happening, you see any suspicious activity right now. If you see any suspicious activity, if you see any suspicious activity. Call, call it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I just thought, hold on, hold on, hold on, real quick, hold on. Hold on. Answer, answer, real quick, answer, real quick, answer, real quick. Okay, sort of. Answer, real quick, answer. answer, real quick. Hold on, hold on. Okay, so I'm talking about the situation that's been going on with the shooting. So I decided to bring somebody on. Hold on, let me see if I can find her. One. And go. Hold on. Okay. So anyway, with the shootings, what's been going on? What I've been telling people is to be cautious, be aware of what's going on. Um, take time to make sure, make sure where you're at. Make sure where you're at. Make sure if you see somebody who seems suspicious, if you see somebody who seems like they might be doing something crazy, let people know. Call somebody, tag somebody. Make people aware of what's going on because in the scenario, you know. Like I said, if it can happen in Minnesota, it can happen anywhere in the country. That's just my thing. If it if it can happen anywhere, if it can happen anywhere in the country, if it can happen anywhere, hmm, if it can happen anywhere, if it can happen anywhere, hmm, hold on, trying to bring you on. Okay, I apologize. I know I'm not. I'm. I'm kind of dipping in and out right now. Bring you on. Bring, bring. But 
Okay, so anyway, yeah, so anyway, that's the whole thing I want to do is I want to tell you to take caution, be careful where you're at, take time to watch people. If you see any suspicious activity, let people know that, you know, something's going on. That's my thing. Um, overall, I care about you. I care about your life. And, you know, it's sad we live in a point right now where, where you have people who, I've always said this about humanity. We really care, but we really don't care about what happens to other people as long as it benefits us, as long as the end result is benefiting us. And I think these terrorist bastards who've been doing all this crazy stuff, and I hate to, I, I, I don't want to make this podcast so negative, but I got to be honest. I, I want to talk about this. I hate these selfish a holes who, do you know how sickly selfish it sounds to say? I'm willing to blow myself up or kill seven. And I'm talking about all across the board. I'm talking about ISIS, Taliban, Al Qaeda, all of them. Do you know how selfish it sounds to say I'm willing to kill myself? I'm willing to kill. I'm willing to kill myself and ten other people who have nothing to do with this scenario, who literally have nothing to do with what's going on, only for the fact that. I get to go to heaven and have 72 virgins because I believe ice as follows that same ideology. I'm not sure, but Taliban and the Al Qaeda follow that same ideology, the 72 virgin quality. Do you know how selfish and sick that sounds? What type of God would even plant that in your mind? But that's just weird to me, man. Like I want to, I want nothing more than on this podcast to bring a member of ice and a member of ideology of one of those, these Islamic, radical Islamic ideologies. I wanted to bring them on this podcast with me and you, and we can have the conversation with them and say, you know, why do you think like this? Why do you, where, why is your thought process like this? What are you thinking about? What, what's in your world? What, what, the, what, what are you sick? Like what's going on? Like what's wrong with you? So that's just my opinion. You know, is what it is. Now, shout out to, um, Shout out to my fa- shout out to mm. shout out to my family out there who's been supporting the podcast. Um, this this episode right now was actually a little bit rocky. Uh, I was just mentally distracted by so many different things right now. Like literally, I had to set up the podcast, I had to set up the show segments, then I had to set up the ad, set, set set up the ad while I was doing the podcast. So it kind of was like a a run around, but um. Thank you for participating. Thank you for listening this far into the podcast. It's really cool. Um, I also want to tell you to make sure you listen to the day, the night, late night episode that comes on at nine o'clock. You can also listen to me again at one p.m. tomorrow. I'm going to be doing this podcast again live tomorrow at one p.m. Um, and that's pretty much it. I just want to say those things to you. Um, be careful out there. Take your time. I have no fat boy inside of a saw recommend. Oh no, I do, 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 I do. Okay, okay, okay. Just remember. Um, today is actually um I I know you don't I know you probably don't love Brazilian culture the way I do, but today is actually a very, very, very important day in Brazilian culture. Not even Brazilian culture, actually Catholic culture. It's called um it's called like the uh, the day of the Saint Saint Damien and Saint Cosmic Cosmos or São do São Damião, São Cosmes. Um and even if you're not Catholic, even if you're not Catholic, do this for me. I want you to do this for me. It'd be so freaking cool, bro. Okay, so this is what I want you to do. On this day, I want you to take the time to just eat as much freaking candy as possible. Eat, I'm talking about crazy amounts of candy. Because on the holiday, it's like in Brazil, it's like a day where you eat like a bunch of candy and stuff because the saints represent children. They're, they're the protectors of children. So I would love for you on this day, just eat as much candy as possible. I'm talking about Hella candy. I'm talking about hella candy. I'm talking about hella candy. Like hecka candy. Hecka candy. As much candy as possible. Um, being that I'm on a budget, I ain't gonna be able to eat as much. <laughs> I ain't gonna be able to eat as much candy with you as I want to. But uh, but uh, um, I'm, I'm I'll be with you in spirit. I'll put it to you like that. I'll be with you in spirit. Um. I'm gonna be with you in spirit. I'm gonna take the time. I'm 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 gonna take the time. I'm probably gonna eat a lot more. Uh, I'm thinking about just like eating a big ass peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and that's my celebration of Cosme and Don Miguel. Matter of fact, 
Yeah, that's my celebration of Cosby on and Dom. Dom on and Cosby is this. eating a big eating a big peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That's how I'm celebrating. That's how I'm celebrating my day. So you know, that is what it is. Now, with that being said, my name is JT. I want to thank you so much for tuning into the podcast. I want to thank you so much for messing with your boy. It's cool to get on here and know that there's people out there who really take the time to feel me, who connect with me, and you know it feels great. So um. Listen to the late night episode. The late night episode comes out at, at 9 p.m. Pacific time. This episode comes out tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific time. And we're going to have a good time. Uh, I mean, not this episode. The next episode, the Daily Show, comes on. <sighs> I'm saying it wrong. Okay, so we have two episodes a day. It's one that comes out at 1 p.m. Pacific time and another one 9 p.m. Pacific time. Now, whatever other times it comes in around the other time zones around the world, you know, I don't know. I just know what they taught me in my geology class. So with that being said, my name is JT. It's been cool talking to you. Thank you so much for tuning in to the People's Paradise Podcast. Ooh, I burped. Oh! Oh! Oh!